Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with another fan TV. Back at you, another video at the content. This video, go ahead and smash that like button at the content this channel. Go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Ravens beat the Pittsburgh Steelers 16 to 14. In a true uh, Raven Steelers kind of game, tough, rugged, physical. Um, both backup quarterbacks get into the game. Uh, just a game that had a lot of things happening and going on with it. But the Ravens come out on top, all right? I didn't give any standout performance last week, right? And I probably should have gave some guys on the defense. You know, I should have did that. But we back at it this week. We're going to give us some standout performance for this game, man, for sure, okay? Um, I want to start off with J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins was activated today. I wasn't sure how much he would play, but he played a lot. He was a lead dog, right? And effectively, he carried the Ravens on his back to this W, okay? Now, listen, I will say this, all right? The big run he had when he broke out into the open, I'm a little concerned about how he looked running. It looked like he was kind of dragging that leg behind him, kind of like, like he was galloping almost. Uh, but in the short area quickness, he looked amazing. He looked great. Scored a touchdown today. Let's give J.K. Dobbins numbers officially. 15 carries, 120 yards, 8 yards a carry, and a touchdown, okay? Um, no catches for J.K. Dobbins, no targets, nothing like that, all right? He'll, he'll get involved in the past game as we get going along. Number two on offense, I want to give a shout out to Gus Edwards, all right? Gus Edwards, 13 carries, 66 yards, 5.1 yards a carry. The Ravens and the Ravens fans, we have been waiting for this dynamic duel of Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins to really get it rolling, and they got it going this game, all right? Now, listen, you can't talk about a great running game without talking about the running, I mean, uh, the offensive line, all right? Offensive line did their thing, even without... Um, Kevin Zeitler, who was a big, big miss. The offensive line dominated this Pittsburgh Steelers, excuse me, de defensive line on the first and second level when it came to running the ball. Now, pass pass blocking, it wasn't the greatest. I'm going to be honest with you, pass blocking wasn't the greatest. Uh, Tyler Huntley had to escape a lot. Um, it clashed a couple of times on Anthony Brown as well. But run blocking, they did their thing, okay? Now, I'm going to get to the other side of the ball. I'm going to get to the other side of the ball. Two players, are, so three players, I'm sorry. So I got five standout performers. I usually don't do this, man. You should keep it to like three or four, but a lot of guys play good today, all right? And I got to give them they, gotta give them they just do, okay? So three players on defense, right? Uh, we talked about J.K. Dobbins coming back. Let's talk about Marcus Williams coming back, okay? Marcus Williams is that classic center field free safety. If you throw it up, over, uh, throw it up deep down the field, I'm confident Marcus Williams is going to be there to make a play. And he was. He picked off Mr. Bisky. That was Mr. Bisky's third interception. Um, so I'm glad to see Marcus Williams back. He, when he's back there, I feel a sense of ease when the ball goes deep, right? Now, I like Geno Stone. There's no shot at Geno Stone, nothing like that. I think he's a really good young player. But it was, it's not the same thing, right? Marcus Williams is a it's an elite safety. It's just simple as that. He's an elite safety, okay? Um, now, like I said, Mr. Bitchy threw three interceptions. The first two he uh, he threw is to the other two standard performers, right? Patrick Queen, Roquan Smith. Now, I'm not just giving these guys standard performers because they caught interceptions. I'm giving them standard performers because they were all over the field. They are becoming one of the best linebacker duos in the NFL. The Ravens must figure out a way. I know this is a regular season video, so we don't get too deep into contract stuff, but the Ravens must figure out a way to pay Roquan Smith, pay Lamar Jackson, figure it out. All right, I don't care what it's going to do. And when you have elite players on your team, you figure out how to keep them, right? And Patrick Queen is going to be here for at least another year or two. You know, he has his, his fifth year option to play out. Roquan Smith, you got to pay him. You got to resign him. This guy is big time. All right. Um, the play he made, the first interception of the other day, just reading that pass across the middle, go up with two hands, beautiful catch. I mean, it's a big play in the game. Steelers were driving. Patrick Queen, another huge play in the game. Steelers are also driving as well. Looks like they can have a chance to score. Once again, that's the uh, two-minute drive, right? Um, the the uh, tight end fry move gets past Roquan. Patrick Queen has his back. Makes a leaping interception. This might be the best play in Patrick Queen's career in pass coverage. Actually, there's no might. It is, all right? It's, this is even better than the play he made uh, versus the Bengals uh, in week five, right? Now, a lot of people want to say that Patrick Queen has been... Um, Oh, ever since Roquan came here, Patrick Queen's been another level. While that is true, let's give Patrick Queen some more credit than that. Like I said, since that Bengals game, which was week four or five, Patrick Queen has been one of the best linebackers in the NFL. Since that game, he's been one of the best in the league, all right? Um, is he elite? Not yet. He still does 
a couple of things like he had an offsides today. He uh, he came through the guy clean on Kenny Pickett to start the game. Missed him. Roquan uh, cleaned it up. But the Ravens are using him his, his his at his peak attributes, and he's delivering for him. Simple as that. So that's beautiful to see. All right. Um. So let's let's talk about the game, right? Let's talk about the game a little bit. All right. Um. So we'll start off the game. You know, the Ravens go. Uh, Oh, first of all, before we get into that, give me your stand-up performance in the comments, man. Please let me know who stood out to you guys. And maybe the same guys I have. If, if that's the case, then comment those guys' names down. If you got somebody different, shout them out, man. Tell me what tell me what stood out to you about their game today. But today was a good win for the Baltimore Ravens. I don't care how you try to frame it, phrase it. All right. 16 to 14 with your quarterback number three essentially have to come into the game versus a division rival at on the road. That's a good win. All right. But let's talk about the game, like I said, okay? Um, so the offense, J.K. Dobbins gets to start, which is great to see, but they go three and out, all right? Um, so basically, <laughs> the first drop for the Steelers, I realized something that Kenny Pickett is very fast. I, I I knew he was athletic, right? I knew he was an athletic quarterback. Like, he could move, but he got around the edge pretty quickly. Unfortunately for him, Roquan Smith, you know, hey, it was a legal tackle. But throw him to the ground. He's in concussion protocol. That pretty much ends Kenny Pickett's day. He comes back into the game, but it's really only for like um, one drive. Then he's back out the game. Then it's pretty much Trubisky for the rest of the time right there. Okay. Um, yeah. So basically what I had from that first quarter was uh, the run game wasn't really the start off. The run game wasn't that great without Lamar. You got to be honest. Wasn't that great to start off with. Huntley was missing some throws, but he made a couple of good throws as well. I thought the old line um was okay in the first quarter it seemed like Huntley kind of got happy feet a little bit like he'll he'll get the ball look one two to start bouncing around and he'll take off right now he scrambled pretty effectively okay and he, he did his thing you know so I'm not mad at him for that um Ravens get a field goal one of the drives in the first quarter uh, so let's so for the, for the defense the Steelers run game really couldn't get going uh, Broderick Washington had a tip pass on a Trubisky um, rollout. That was nice. They were containing Najee Harris. Now, I will say this. George Pickens did have a big catch in the first quarter. Um, I thought the P.I. call on Marlon was bad uh, down there near the goal line, whatever, so I didn't really care for that. Najee Harris scored a touchdown. Um, so, in the first quarter, I think it ended up 10-7. Ravens also scored a touchdown in the first quarter. J.K. Dobbins has a, has a huge run, the one I mentioned earlier, where it looked like he was kind of galloping. Um, it feels like that was a couple years ago he scores on that run, but he's still getting back in the form, so I'm not um, going to put and be too critical about that. I'm not. All right. But I just hope that he is healthy enough to play and that the re injury risk isn't too high just because when he got out there in the open field, it, 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 didn't look, it didn't look exactly right, but I hope he's okay. All right. But in short area, he played great. Um, he got a touchdown run. A beautiful run, really, on a, on a touchdown. You know, he gets the handoff. Dodge is a guy, Dodge is a defensive lineman, looks like it's up there in the end zone. Great play. It's 10 7 after one, after one quarter. Um, second quarter, Gus Edwards gets going, big runs. Um, Tyler Huntley was short of, uh, of a first down. He had a couple of scrambles, but Ravens go for it again. Ravens bobble to snap, turnover. Uh, so, yeah, just a lot of things going on, right? Just a lot of uneven play, especially in the first half. Uh, still, his running game started to get going after that. They was moving the ball, but Roquan Smith right here, man. Big, big play. Um, Tyler Huntley makes probably his best throw of the game. He's rolling out to his left. Throws the ball like 30 yards down the field to Deshaun Jackson. Um, Deshaun Jackson starts talking a little trash to the Steelers corner. When that happened, I was like, okay, now this feel like Raven Steelers, right? Um, now, I will say this. Huntley did miss Andrews on a touchdown. He was coming across the field just because pressure came there a little bit. But if Huntley holds the ball maybe for one more second, he can throw that pass across the field to Andrews and probably take a hit in the process. But Huntley is really one, two. If it's not there, I'm scrambling. And it, hey, listen, that's no problem with that um, as a right as a backup quarterback. Now, if he was your starting quarterback, um, that would be something that you had to address. Like, you know, you had to be able to get through more progression, not just one, two. But he gets the one to two pretty fast. And then if it's not there, he's taking off. He's not going to. I'll put it like this. The offense with Tyler Huntley is not going to have too many negative plays. Not You're not going to have too many plays that go backwards, right? Just because he gets rid of the ball. He doesn't keep the ball in his hands for very long, all right? But he did miss Andrews, okay? Um, Ravens stall right there. And they got to kick the field goal, 13-7. to 
Um, now I will say this, uh, George Pickens made another big play on the sideline um, going against Marlon Humphrey again. Now the first one he caught on Humphrey, it looked like Humphrey was kind of playing cover too. He was kind of, he wasn't, he didn't even look at Pickens. He looked like he was trying to uh, see uh, if he had safety help, excuse me. Marcus Williams kind of rotated a little bit late. But the second one, that was a straight up jump ball, man. And George Pickens, he got it. Now, a lot of Ravens fans are going to say about George Pickens versus David Ojabo. Ojabo doesn't play again today. Um, listen, man, I wanted George Pickens in the draft, too. I really did. Uh, this is not even no retro, uh, in hindsight kind of thing. I really did want George Pickens, but at the end of the day, he's a Pittsburgh Steeler. So what he does from now on, and I hope he has a good career. I'm not, you know, nothing like that. But from what he does is from now on, as far as the Ravens, I really don't care. So the seeing Ravens fans just kind of, Oh, what would have been with George Pickens? What would have been? We don't know. He's not on the team. I don't care. I'm sorry, I don't. Right? And we see what this team does to wide receivers, right? So there's no guarantee that he comes here under this scheme and is playing effectively. There's no guarantee of that, right? To be honest with you. Now, do I want to see Ojabo get on the field? Yeah, but I want to see him get on the field when he's healthy, when he's right. If he's not right this year, then it is what it is. It is what it is. Um... All right, so, but the Ravens end up getting that Patrick Queen interception. So now it's 13-7 at halftime. Uh, it's a good half for the Ravens. It really is, you know. Um, now, this is what I have an issue with. Third quarter, J.K. Dobbins is running well. The running game is running well. Uh, I think it's third down and three. Um, the Ravens decide to go QB, QB power, right, which is a very uh, common play to do with Lamar Jackson, even though I'm still not always a fan of it as much as Lamar Jackson gets hit going up the middle. But he does a pretty good job of, Dodging big hits, you know. Unfortunately, Tyler Huntley couldn't dodge this hit that and make it fish patch later on. And my issue is this. You're already on your second quarterback. You know that your third string quarterback technically second string in this game, Anthony Brown, is a rookie who has only seen preseason action. He this is his first game being active this season. So why would you run a QB power and put your quarterback Tyler Huntley in harm's way like that? I just wasn't a fan of that. Tyler Huntley gets hurt. Ends up going to concussion protocol. Questionable to return. Ends up being out for the rest of the game. So it's Anthony Brown show for the rest of that for the rest of that game. But to me, that's bad coaching. That's bad coaching. You got to have situational awareness. Even if you just hand the ball off to whether it's Duvernay on a jet sweep, whether it's Gus Edwards, whether it's J.K. Dobbins, keep Tyler Huntley out of harm's way. And the Ravens put him in harm's way right there, and he ends up getting knocked off for it. All right. Um, Anthony Brown comes in at uh, QB. He completes the pass to Demarcus Robinson. TJ Watt gets a sack, drive over, whatever. Um, now, <laughs> to start of the third quarter, um, Deontay Johnson was kind of working Marcus Peters, bro. Marcus Peters had a, I would say Marcus Peters had a rough game. And the start of this uh, second half, the Ravens missed a lot of tackles, bro. Whether it was Marcus Peters, Kyle Hamilton, Odafi Yowie, um, I think maybe even Patrick Queen might have missed a tackle in there, if I'm not mistaken, right? A lot of missed tackles in there for the Ravens, right? So a lot of plays where it felt like we were watching the Ravens team from last year or the Ravens team from early on in this season where we just couldn't wrap up and make that play. Um, the Steelers, the Steelers don't really get anything out of that drive, though, so it is what it is. Um, that's when Mitchell, uh, Mitchell Trubisky, excuse me, I don't know why I couldn't say that, throws his third interception of the game. Pretty much threw a, a pop fly out there to Marcus Williams. He goes over there and catches the ball. Um, so in the fourth quarter, Anthony Brown started getting more comfortable. Or they called Marcus Williams down at the one-yard line, too, which I thought was a little strange. But they said his momentum took him out of bounds at the one. Whatever. I thought it should have been at the 20. But anyway, so the Ravens get the ball. Anthony Brown finds the Marcus Fives. Then, Marcus, then, then Mark Andrews. J.K., like I said, is moving and cutting well. Gus is moving well. Uh, the Ravens control the clock. And they end up kicking a field goal, getting it down to 16 to 7. Um, not, not down, but you know, sending the lead. They did what they needed to do, right? With Anthony Brown in the game, they played it really conservative. They they did right by him. They did it right by him, honestly. Because he's QB3, bro. He's a literal undrafted rookie. This was a tough, tough game to come into to try to do anything. So the fact that he even completed a couple of passes, I'm happy with, honestly. Um, Anthony Brown went. Three for five for 16 yards. Good for him, honestly. That was a tough spot to be in. Real, real tough spot to be in. 
Um, so the Steelers do end, so, uh, get the ball back. They try to kick a field goal. Calais Campbell blocks the field goal. Major play. Calais Campbell um, is an absolute menace when it comes to blocking field goals. He had one last year versus the Colts. Um, big player, you know, using that 6 8 frame. So that was huge. Um, the Ravens, but now it comes out to two minutes or well, three minutes, and the Ravens really need to get a stop, lock up. The, deep, the, the defense allows a touchdown. Now, the touchdown ended up being inconsequential, didn't mean anything, but it's another one of those drives where we need the Ravens to get a stop, and they couldn't do it. Marlon Humphrey gets beat by Deontay Johnson over top, throw another 15 yards on top of that. I think it was Justin Matabike with a rough in the passer call. Um, and then uh, Trubisky completes a, a nice little pass over across the middle to Fryer move. Uh, I think Kyle Hamilton was in coverage, all right? So again, when the Ravens needed to stop, they could not get it. I'm, I'm not going to be negative about it. The Ravens end up winning this game, but you need to get that stop. You need it. You need it. Uh, so Ravens get the ball back. Gets down to third and three. Ravens get this three yards. They win. They end up doing a fake uh, jet sweep to Duvernay. Uh, kind of a counter power run to a uh, to Gus Edwards. He gets that three yards. Gets about five on the play. GG, man. Beautiful game. Uh, this was a physical game. This was Ravens Steelers for real running the ball. Um, defense, defense, defense. And the Ravens came out on top. Now, John Hall wasn't give one of his classic speeches, right? Um, it was ugly, but it was us. And I'm going to let it slide this week. Because it's the Steelers. Most Raven Steelers games aren't pretty. They aren't um, flashy. So if this is one week where you can say it wasn't pretty, but it was us, it could be this week, John Harbaugh. So the Ravens win 16-14, um, improved the 9-4 in the season, improved the 3-0 in the division. Big time win because I believe the Bengals won that game as well. So the Bengals are on the Ravens' heels. Um, they got to see the Bengals again this year. But next week is going to be Cleveland on Saturday. Uh, 4 p.m. So watch out for that game. Obviously, you know, we get the Ravens need to win that one as well. Um, Deshaun Watson's playing. So even though he's not playing the greatest because he just came back, still a big game for the Ravens, whatever. Uh, so listen, man. Ravens win this game. 16-14. Uh, Beautiful dub. Like I said in the comments, give me your standout performance, please. And we can talk about it from there, man. Um, and we'll hopefully Tyler Huntley's all right. We'll see if Lamar Jackson can come back next week. But we're going to wrap it up here, man. It's your boy Gabriel. Just on the Fan TV. I'm out.